Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Afterthought. This is episode eight. Episode eight. Yeah. And listen, I, I was telling you that so many people have the comments from last week. We've had more comments last week than we ever had previously. But you know what the comment was? Hmm. Austin has so much wisdom. <laughs> people don't really know me. <laughs> <laughs> the wisdom of Austin was flowing. Those analogies, those analogies were like butter. If you if you guys really want wisdom and good analogies, just have a kid. I think that's what happens. It is. Yeah. It's like when your kid pops out, you have like 13 illustrations. You turn into Solomon. You Bam. Do. Bam. There it is. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do. Random questions today, but I've got two questions. That is typically you asking me questions. Mm -hmm. I've got two for you. Mm-hmm. You've got two for me. Mm -hmm. And then your last question, whatever it is, I'm asking you that question back. So there'll be five questions. But yeah. Two, two, one, one. Okay. Does that make sense? I like the math. Okay. There okay. We go. go in. All right. Question number one. Mm -hmm. If you could be a master at anything, mm -hmm. what would it be? Kung Fu. Just just to show up. <laughs> yeah, because do you know do you know how powerful it would be just to have the ability to literally destroy somebody but them not know it? You know what I mean? It's just yeah. like you just like like a normal guy. And then they're of us like, hey, Sean, I'm taking that parking place. No, no, you're not. Yes, I am. <laughs> and just like cry chop them. Yeah, I would want to be a master of just looking like I could do kung fu. <clears throat> like a long mustache. Yeah, like a Fu Manchu. 100% long and a ponytail, ponytail. with all... everything shaved off except for the ponytail. That would and, be awesome. And the hair has to be gray, like pure white. Yeah. It has to be like, you have to kind of look like Gandalf, but like Asian. Yeah. It'd be like an Asian Gandalf and you could just destroy people. Yeah. And you, I would just carry nunchucks. All the time. And you just wear a robe 100%. all the time. Yeah. Like if you're Bruce Lee, you would just destroy people. Yeah. Just a one inch punch, everybody. Just a one inch punch. Pop, yeah. And then you're you're dead. <laughs> Kung Fu. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, question for you. What was your greatest ever celebrity crutch? I would say like my first one, probably my most memorable one mm -hmm. was Selena Gomez when she was on Disney Channel. Oh my gosh. Wizards of Waverly Place. Yep. That was that was my first main celebrity crush with Selena Gomez. Oh, yep. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Celebrity like do you still keep up with her? No. Not really. No. Just... No. After she started dating Justin Bieber, I was like, Okay, she's gone. She's she's <laughs> taken out of my hands. Like I'm not even gonna fight it anymore. <laughs> it was at that point in time. It was at I that point in time. Justin Bieber. He like, took my woman. I gotta switch routes now. I don't know where I'm going, but <laughs> Uh, okay. so yeah, that's what happened. All right, next now. question. Next question. Okay. If you were in a fight, mm -hmm. people were ganging up on you, and you had one Disney princess for backup, who would it be? Mm -hmm. Jasmine. Oh, why is that? Bro, have you seen her in the streets of... What's that? Great? Acrobat. Acrobat. <laughs> have you seen her in the streets of Acrobat? <laughs> I mean, dude, that, that girl knows how to fight, bro. Jumping from rooftops I'm on telling you, rooftop... And, yeah. From rooftop to rooftop, girl can ride a magic carpet. She's got a tiger. She has a tiger as a pet. Cup, I mean, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> like, <laughs> Princess Jasmine is what I'm talking about, bro. That's so funny. I had two answers in my head, and that was not one of them. But, but now that I said it, you're just like. It's a great answer. I mean, dude, she was hardcore. Yeah. I think <laughs> Elsa is the number one answer, though. Oh, man. She's got, like, She's superpowers. Got powers. Yeah. Well, Jasmine has superpowers. <laughs> she can she jump from rooftop to rooftop without, a, <laughs> without breaking a sweat. Yeah. Listen, if you get a pet tiger, you got some power. That is pretty cool. I mean, dude, that's He Man. That tiger. She's the female. She's the She Man. <sighs> she Man and the Masters of Acrobat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's your question. You ready? Yeah. When is the last? <laughs> When's the laugh? When's it? When's the last time you laughed so hard you cried? <laughs> Faith is saying right now. <laughs> Faith is crying right now. She's <laughs> laughing right now so hard. Um, I don't know. There's sometimes when I play video games and I just laugh uncontrollably. Really? Yeah. Uh, her husband Ethan gets me pretty pretty bad. Really? Sometimes. Yeah. He does this like weird singing voice, and I, Faith you, doesn't really you, like can it. Can you imitate it? It's like. Faith, tell it's like tell us tone deaf. On. Josh Groban, so but, like the vibratos, yeah, like, yeah. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it gets me, every, and he just like that's how he talks the whole time, and it gets me every time. But does he mean to do that? Yeah, he does it on purpose. 
next episode we'll have him do it for you. <laughs> so like, give me, give me like, give me like, a, I, I'm sure everyone out there wants to know because they hear Ethan sing every Sunday. Yeah. Like, what what would be like? I wanted the imitation of like him playing a game. So we play Overwatch too. Mm-hmm. And if you if you die in the game, he's like, oh, that really sucked. <laughs> <laughs> It's much better than that. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. Essentially okay. What it All is. right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's great. So that's the last time you laughed so hard you cried? Probably. Yeah. Okay. But that's like on a consistent basis. Okay. So it doesn't take a lot for me to laugh. It doesn't. So. I was thinking, mo- I mean, I get you pretty good sometimes. You did get me good mm. sometimes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Last question. You for me, then me for you. Okay. What would be your weapon of choice mm-hmm. in a zombie apocalypse? Machete. A machete? Sure. Here's the deal. Because zombies are like, bro, they're already dead. Yeah. So a machete's lightweight. You can carry it one hand. You can like pillage in the other hand. You can go <laughs> you can like you know what I'm talking about? You could go in, grab stuff, you go can in, have a snack you in could this go hand. In a, you could buy pop jelly beans in one <laughs> hand and <laughs> you take the machete, pop a jelly bean in there. Yeah, that's good. Show you. Look at Faith. She went from like laughing to us, be like, to oh very concerned. God, I'm <laughs> praying for you tonight at church. So, what about you? What we? So um, my question to you. Yeah. Zombie I would, apocalypse. I would go similar route, but a katana. Uh, yeah. Only if because we I'm Japanese. together. We could, <laughs> what if we travel together? We could share. Yeah, we'd go back to back and just. It would be like All the movies my- where you like chuck them to each other and you mm-hmm. catch them. Yeah. What about Faith? What what weapon of choice would you have in a zombie apocalypse? You get one weapon. A gun. <laughs> <laughs> Effective. <laughs> Faith, I shoot them. I shoot them dead. They're already dead. Faith, I know. I shoot them again dead. I shoot them doubly dead. Double tap. Double tap. Double, double them dead. Double them dead. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay. So the seriousness here. Here we go. What was your thought process in coming up with this determined destination? Because it is a one-off. Yeah. It's a one-hit yeah. wonder. So what was your thought process? In Actually, up? the way this came to me was this. I was uh, I was on the treadmill, and I knew we had a one-hit wonder. And we have a couple one-hit wonders in a row. And I kept thinking about when the Apostle Paul talks about how I count it, like, this idea that, like, following Christ is I've discarded everything else. I've gotten rid of everything else. Everything else like money, fame, education, everything else is out. It's just, it's garbage. It's worthless compared to knowing Christ my Lord. And then he goes on to talk about like, I've had this, I've had this, I've had this, I've had this, I've had it. But, but at the end of the day, my constant pursuit, my priceless pursuit is Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And that kept coming to my head. And I thought, well, why is that constant pursuit of Jesus Christ so important to him? Well, he dials in on it. He talks about how, like in, in Philippians, he talks about the importance of pursuing Christ, having, uh, you know, protecting your witness, having an attitude of joy, having a perspective of heaven, um, having this goal of grace. Like every single thing points to my destination is Jesus, my destination is heaven, but he's determined to get there, hence the, the definition, determined destination. Mm-hmm. Which if you think about us in life, we have some people— um, they have a destination of being rich. They have a destination of being powerful. They have a destination of marrying a certain person. They have a destination of having a certain job, destination of having a certain car. So because they're destined in their own mind to get that, they're determined to stop at no cost to get what they want. Mm-hmm. The determined destination definition I came up with is, man, if you're going to stop at no cost to get what you want, then you should stop at no cost to achieve the goal of heaven, to achieve the goal of a committed relationship with Christ. So that determined destination is stop fighting and being destined or determined in the destination of having the things of the world because Paul says those are worthless. So if you're determined to just get the world, it's like beating your head against a wall. But if you're determined to get heaven, one day you will achieve it. And, And that's the beauty of the determined destination is not be so determined to get the destination of the world because it, lo- it it fades away. Yeah. It, it's it's not forever. It's it's worthless as Paul rubbish. It's garbage. It's it's just it's just thrown out. But if you want to really pursue the things of Jesus, it will last for all eternity. Because that's that's kind of the idea of being determined in that. Yeah. Which so many people give up on Christ so fast. They give yeah. up on their faith so quick. But you got to be determined in that. If the end goal is Jesus, the end goal is heaven. The end goal is salvation. If that's the end goal then you got to always try to live for it every day. Yeah, I love that. And that's kind of what you went through with this sermon, the, the, the determination, what you need to be determined in to get to that destination. Exactly right. 
So uh, one of the things that you had to be determined in was having attitude of joy mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. So wh why is that so important to have an attitude of joy? Well, when Paul talks about the attitude of joy, what he says is it protects your, it's, he uses the word safeguard. It safeguards your, your witness. What that means is it lets other people see you're just not talking about living for Christ. You're actually showing us you live for Christ. Mm -hmm. What he's saying is um, no one's going to come to a follower of Christ that has no faith. Yeah. If you have no faith in your, if you have no faith in Christ, if you're talking about God is so good, but then when hardships come your way, you're just like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Then you're not living out your faith. It's like you would never go to a barber that has a bad haircut. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you would, th those are the kind of things that you're just like, no, I, I, I'm looking on the outside going, dude, I don't, I like you would never go to a tattoo artist that has no tattoos. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, those are the things. And so why would you ever go to a Christian for advice when they don't live out the advice that Christ has already given them. Yeah. So that's the idea of like having this attitude of joy. That doesn't mean not, that doesn't mean you're not going to go through difficult seasons. That doesn't mean um, you're not real or authentic. What I'm trying to say is Paul's talking about not pretending. So don't pretend like everything's always good in our lives. Things aren't always good, right? I've just chosen an attitude of joy in the midst of all that's not good for sure. So what he's saying here is protect or safeguard your faith by having an attitude of joy. So that means that when bad things happen, you don't rejoice that bad things, you, bad things are happening. You don't go, Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Whew, just lost my job. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Yeah. I lost my parent. I, I, I got a divorce. I, you're, you're not excited about what you've experienced. You're just excited of who you have while you're experiencing sure. it. And so what that does is it protects your witness. So people go, man, you actually believe what you say. Yeah. Like you actually don't just talk the talk you you walk it yeah and and so that's the idea of 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 having that attitude of joy you're not fake i think too many christians kind of are fake that time do i have to always be happy no yeah no it's, it's not going to be like that you're not always going to have a smile on your face but you are going to have joy in the midst of what you're going through because you know he's with it all the way he's with you all the way through it yeah no that's great i love that i think it's so easy just to wallow yeah. in, in the moment yeah um to kind of be just down on yourself but in the moment like you said you got to remember god's with you yep. always yeah and that's why we can be joyful it, and i think it goes back to kind of what we said um many podcasts ago yeah. there's so many things to be thankful for you just have to think about it yeah um and in that moment where you're just like ah oh, nothing's going right the situation's terrible um i just lost my job for example be like but you know what god's with me yeah you know what i still got a great church family mm -hmm. you know what i still got you can name whatever and that's going to keep you thinking joyfully um on well, that track. when it says in scripture consider it pure joys my brothers when you yeah. go through this and this and he's not saying uh consider it joy what what, what you're going through right it, it's consider it joy what it's teaching you what you're learning in the middle of it uh that you have christ in the middle of it so it's i think sometimes we we take that for granted and we look at scripture well, i just how am i supposed to be happy in the midst of that i'm, I'm not saying that you got to be happy for the circumstance you're going through but you'd be happy for what the circumstance is teaching you yeah how it's developing your character how 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 it's developing your commitment to christ those are the things that paul says are so important so in your determined destination to have a great witness for other people be determined to have an attitude of joy in the midst of it so that they know you're just not talking a good game. You're living a great life. Yeah. I think that's a great thing to focus on is mm -hmm. that you are being grown through this process. It's that's not, right. you're just having this bad situation just for the sake of it. It's because God's letting you grow. There is something happening. So that, yeah. I think that's a good thing to focus on. Um, next question is how do we know if we are being disobedient to God? We talked about how we need to be obedient always, mm -hmm. but sometimes it might not be the easiest to, know what God's telling you to do or follow what God's telling mm -hmm. you to do. So how do we know when we're being disobedient? I think the best thing you could do is listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You know, when, when you give your heart to Jesus Christ, um, you, when you say yes to the Lord, you get the power of the Holy Spirit living it in you and through you. And the Holy Spirit's guiding you. The Holy Spirit's giving you wisdom, giving you encouragement, giving you a voice, giving you peace giving you a direction. The problem is not that he's not giving us direction. The problem is we don't access the direction or ask for the wisdom. Yeah. And so the Holy Spirit's giving us that direction, giving us that wisdom. What we have to do is, is ask for it or listen for it. I think a, a lot of times what happens is we get ourselves in trouble where um, we take ourselves away from the Lord and the Holy Spirit is calling us back. Yeah. We just have kind of... Um, 
uh, but deafened ourselves, maybe if you will, to the voice of the Holy Spirit, because we don't want to hear it because right. we want to hear. Yeah. Um, you, you know, there's moments where we're in the middle of the Bible's super clear on so many specific things in the way we live our lives. Sometimes we don't want to listen to those things because it, 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 it kind of impedes on how we want to live. So yeah. we just go, what? maybe that scripture is not for me. Right. Maybe that scripture is for you. Mm-hmm. So I think what happens is I think the way we get disobedient is by ignoring the voice of the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit's convicting, correcting, leading, guiding, encouraging, showing direction, showing light, showing vision, then you have to be open to that voice of the Holy Spirit at all times and not ignore it and do what you want because that's where the disobedience comes in. The yeah. disobedience comes in when you do what you want to do and ignore what God wants you to do. So I think the best way to do that is to be, because if you also know the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can never lead you astray. Yep. The Holy Spirit can never lead you away from God. The Holy Spirit's always going to lead you in areas of growth. The Holy Spirit's, uh, you know, so it's like we've talked about this before, that's that word, that sanctification. It's not that um, you're perfect, but we're being perfected. Yeah. So every single day, I'm not, I'm not perfect. One day I will be when I'm in heaven. Yeah. But there's a there's a uh, a sanctification, purification, uh, perfection process that's taking on a daily basis. And how do we know that perfection is taking place? Because you make mistakes, and you're like, ah, oh, man, I made a mistake. I got to repent for that, ask for forgiveness for that, and move on. But the d- disobedience comes in is when you don't repent and you don't right. ask for forgiveness, and you close off the voice of the Holy Spirit, and you keep going your way. Mm-hmm. That's when you get so far down the road that you've completely ignored what He says to go and do what you want to do. Yeah, no, that's good. I think, I think one of the easiest ways to um, know if you're being disobedient mm-hmm. is just knowing God's word. Exactly. He, he's never going to go against his word. It's, right. it's his word. You know, it is him. So he's never going to go against God's word. So if you familiar, familiarize yourself yeah. with God's word, um, you're no, you know what you're going to be. Mm-hmm obeying and disobeying yep. just by reading his word and being familiar with it. Well, and you know, even James talks about how we're, we're, um, we're tempted by, by like the devil lures us mm-hmm. by tempting us with our own evil desires. So it's not that the Lord is tempting you. The devil's tempting you right. by watching you to see what you like. So if he sees you're always got your computer open to a certain website, or he sees you're always looking at this girl or you, you're tempted by stealing money or, or gossiping or whatever. He will, he will use what you uh, visibly show him as being a, a, a lure. That, that luring is, is a, it's a fishing term. It's like yep. he's trying bait. He's trying bait. He's trying bait. He's trying until he gets you. Yep. But it's based on what, and people blame God. I can't believe God threw me that tempted. God didn't throw you into that. You were tempted by that because yeah. the devil just is watching you to see what lures you in. Right. And then boom, he's got you. And that's why you got, but the, uh, Paul also says, God always gives you a way out. Yep. There's always a way always out. Always a way out. What is that way out? The Holy Spirit is always leading you and there is a way out. Yeah. It's not that there isn't a way out. It's that sometimes we just don't want to find it. Yeah. There's always a way out. And that's what's so good about God is he, get, he gives us a choice. Absolutely. It's, it's on us. Like, yeah. The devil's going to tempt us, obviously. God's going to give us a way out, but it's up to us to choose which way. 100%. The Holy Spirit's going to be speaking to us. We just need to obey. That's right. Yeah. So, again, when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, that doesn't mean it has to be audible. It's not going to be like, go this way or whatever. I mean, it could be. Yeah. But it's going to speak to you in many different forms, many different ways. And if you're in tune with the Holy Spirit, you're going you're gonna to know it's the Holy Spirit. Exactly. People ask me before, Sean, what does the Holy Spirit sound like? The Holy Spirit sounds a lot like my voice, but with way more wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, it's like, I didn't come up with that. Yeah. You know, that sounded like my voice, but that was not my wisdom. Right. You know, it's like, I didn't say to myself, go start Anchor Church. That was clearly the voice of the Holy Spirit. So yeah. w- when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, when the Holy Spirit says to you, you're in your grocery store, pay for that person's groceries. It sounded like me. But that wasn't me because right. I probably wouldn't have prompted that. You know, those are the kind of you know those are <laughs> yeah. the kind of things where just like the, the the voice of the Holy Spirit sounds a lot like me, but with way more wisdom, yeah, way more godly integrity than probably what I would have thought for sure. Um, next, we you talked about living a life of persistence. Mm-hmm. What does that look like exactly? I think the life of persistence, as we're kind of determined in the destination of heaven, is to not give up. Mm-hmm. I think, man, I think people give their heart to Christ and they are all gung ho for the first weeks, months. Yeah. And I say, I, I, I don't, 
even go into years because I think when it's fresh, it's like it's like when you go it's on like a, a new relationship, dude. When you go on a date with, for the first time, I remember I dated a girl in high school or in college, and first couple weeks is like you go pick her up and knock on her apartment. She looks like oh my gosh, ten out of ten. I'm like oh my gosh, this like what the heck? And I remember like after like a, you know three or four weeks of dating her, I went to the ha- and she was had like sweatpants on her hair pulled up back in a ponytail, which wasn't bad. She was still pretty, but I'm just like oh, we just went from a level of like. <laughs> all into this like super casual really fast like yeah. you know and not that that was a bad thing i just wasn't prepared for it yeah. and i think sometimes we do the same thing in our walk with christ mm-hmm. it's like we're at church all the time we're tithing we're giving i will never be late again and then a month in we put on sweatpants and pull our hair on, put our hair on a ponytail and be like oh well maybe i'll be a little late this sunday but no, the boat looks good or uh, you know what i think the golf course is looking great right now or and i think what happens is we turn into casual christians so fast yep. and what happened was we lost the perseverance because it was hard mm-hmm. we lost the persistence because it was hard it's hard to keep giving it's hard to keep tithing it's hard to keep serving it's hard to keep coming to church every single sunday it's hard to get in a crew it's are those things hard it is but what's the cost yeah and the cost is you're becoming like jesus yeah that's not I don't take that lightly, you know? So I think the, the perseverance is knowing that you're going to go through stuff, but everything you go through is worth it. Yeah. The time is worth it. The energy is worth it. The resource is worth it. Like the tithing is, it's worth it. Being at church every single Sunday, it's worth it. It's worth yeah. it. So that's what I would say. For sure. I mean, I, I feel like we look at the disciples and different people in scripture. Paul, for example, mm-hmm. I mean, Timothy, like people who, were beaten, yeah. bruised, yeah. thrown in prison, stoned, all these different yeah. things for Jesus. And I'm looking at that and be like, do I have do I have that? In <laughs> do I have me? what it takes? Yeah. yeah. Do I have what it takes? And I think that's what part of the perseverance is. It is not necessarily that you'll ever be in that situation. Mm-hmm. You'll be in different situations where you'll be challenged, but will you be ready for it? That's yeah. what the perseverance is. I think a lot of it is preparation instead of perseverance. That's great. Being prepared yeah. for the perseverance. Be- being prepared in the perseverance or yeah. for the perseverance. Or pers- that's great, dude. I love yeah. that, being prepared. Yeah, I think that's part of the toughest part because like you said, it's so easy to get complacent. But when you're starting to get complacent, it's not going to go anywhere. Nothing mm-hmm. grows in complacency. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what people say like, how'd you get such a great marriage? How'd you, how'd you get such great kids? How'd you get such work? Yeah. It takes work. And that's the people, people want the product. They don't want to put in the work to get the product. Yeah. The same thing in your relationship with Christ. Like I want a great relationship with Christ. Then put in the work to have it. Yeah. It just doesn't happen. He did everything for you. It's time for us to live our lives for him. Yeah. And, uh, having a relationship with Jesus, it's, it's relationship over religion. That's what we'll yeah, always say exactly. because it's the truth. It's relationship over religion. And just like in any relationship, it takes work. Like yep. you said, it, Marissa and I, if we came home and never spoke to each other, it wouldn't be much of a marriage. It wouldn't really be much of a relationship at all. But that's the same thing with Jesus Christ. How are you going to get to know him if you don't talk to him? If you don't read his word, mm-hmm. if you don't know him at all, how mm-hmm. are you going to be able to be prepared, have perseverance to say you're a Christian. Yeah. Cause people get mad. They go, I, I don't know Jesus. Well, you don't spend time with him. Yeah. You know, you don't, you don't hang with him. You don't, you're not reading his word. You don't know his voice. Um, of course you don't know him, you know, yeah. and that's not on him. That's on us. Right. Right. Um, so last question. Okay. Um, are these three destinations that we talked about the only three destinations that we need to focus on or do they change by a day or a situation? That's a great question. I, I base all those on what Paul says in scripture, um, your, your, your perseverance for Christ, your attitude of joy for Christ, your witness, your commitment, your connection, all those were all based on what he says. Are there more, man, I think ultimately, uh, if you're, if you're destined to be, if you are determined to have the destination of being like Jesus, it starts with surrender, obedience, and sacrifice. Mm, At the end of the day, that's it. It's, it's surrender, obedience, and sacrifice. You're going to have an attitude of joy. If you're surrendered, obedient, and sacrificed, you're going to have a great witness. If you're surrendered, uh, su- you know, sacrificing and obedient, you're going to have, uh, you know, you're going to be committed to Jesus and connected to Jesus. If you're obedient, sacrificial, and 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 surrendered, that's the thing that I think is so tough for people because we don't want to sacrifice, we don't want to surrender, we don't yeah. obey. <laughs> I want to obey me. I want to surrender to my will. I want to I want to surrender to what I want. I want to sacrifice and put myself first. And Jesus goes, man, then you just can't do it. Yeah. You just can't do it. Um, you got to give up everything to follow me. And I think that's that determined destination of just knowing every single day I wake up. Every, what is it? What does Jesus say? Take up your cross. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Yeah. Follow me. What's that? Be willing to die every single day. Die to self. Die to what you want. Die to your will. Die to your desires. 
die to your direction and live for mine. Yeah. And I think that's what Paul's trying to communicate is that, man, the, ter- the determined destination of our lives has to be always Jesus first. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, Jesus first. So what does that mean? I'm done. It's Sean Blakeney's done. I said yes to Jesus. He took over. I'm not taking that back because he can do everything he wants with me way better than I could. Yeah. So I'm sacrificial. I'm surrendered and I'm obedient to what he wants to live out that destination of determining to get to heaven. Yeah, no, that's great. I love that. I, I think it is specifically, there's so many different destinations per person, Yeah. but it all boils down to those three things. Yeah. So I love that. Well, think of, okay, uh, let's close with this. Think about you're wanting to go to Cancun. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're, you're going to want to go to Cancun. You've already planned the trip, right? So now you've got the trip on the calendar. You're probably saving money for the trip. You're probably buying things for the trip, getting ready for the trip, making sure the house is taken care of, making sure the dogs are taken care of, making sure the flights taken care of, make sure when we get there, it's all inclusive, but making sure I got my room. I I want the room by the, all of your energy went into something that's planned because you're excited to go to it. Why don't we put the same kind of energy into having a relationship with Jesus? That's good. Why don't we put the same kind of energy into, into, into heaven? It's like, man, Every single day on your calendar should just be heaven. So every yeah. day I'm getting ready for that because I have no idea when I'm going. Yeah, I know I'm going, but I don't know when I'm going, but I'm going to be ready every single day to get there. I'm prepared and I'm following Christ. I'm sacrificed to who I am, to be who he wants me to be. And I think if that's the agenda at the end of the day, the destination is heaven, then I'm determined every single day to live my life in such a way to get there. That's great because we don't, we never know when we're going to be there. You never know. We we think it's not immediate gratification when Mm -hmm. we build into this relationship, but yep. It could be immediate gratification. Could you be. never know. You never so know. So always be prepared. Yeah, that's, that's right. Good. Determined destination. There you go. Another yeah. week after thought under our belts. Had some fun today. Yeah, it was good. Started off strong. Got Faith laughing a little <laughs> bit. I mean, we... Yeah. If we just knew that Kung Fu, though. If we, we knew Kung Fu. In the if podcast. we combined every question we talked about today, we'd be unstoppable. Gosh. If we could just end every podcast like this. <laughs> <laughs> Be incredible <laughs> all right we love you everybody we have a great you. week make sure to subscribe like share with a friend and yeah. if you're watching on spotify go to youtube see you next week well hopefully you love this episode if you did we want to know all about it so join us on spotify like subscribe check us out on youtube this is where you need to be all the time make sure you check us out every wednesday there's gonna be an episode every wednesday so check us out here make sure you turn on your notifications so you know when we post again that's right after that